On Wednesday evening, the Reserve Bank of India signaled a return to capital control measures not seen in the last decade. But despite that, the central bank has been unable to arrest the slide in the currency, at least not so far. The continued outflows are being attributed to both concerns in India and the timing of the Fed's tapering of quantitative easing. Meanwhile, the currency measures over the last month have had significant collateral damage across monetary policy trajectory, costs for the banking system, debt mutual funds and on the equity markets. Joining us to discuss all of this is Ajay Shah, senior fellow at NIFPFP and also a well-known economist. Ajay, many thanks for joining us on Bloomberg. Let me begin by asking you first about the capital controls. Do you believe that these capital controls are effective tools in monetary policy? Do you think these short-term measures work or do they distort? I think these measures do not work. Uh, we have seen this movie before, not just in India but in lots of countries. Uh, when capital controls are introduced, they are successful in introducing microeconomic distortions. But they don't do anything useful in terms of delivering on the goals of macro policy. So I think that the use of these levers is a mistake. I have one larger question about the direction of policy making, Ajay. You know, this whole thrust of what the Reserve Bank of India has been doing and this government has been doing is to go after rupee and rupee speculators. Uh, is, are they really chasing the wrong end of the stick? Uh, is that the crux of the problem that we're facing today? I'm really skeptical about whether there was a problem here that was worth chasing. I feel that the market was doing just fine before uh, the government got into this act of trying to do something about the rupee. Uh, there are secular developments in the economy and it is the job of the nifty and the rupee to reflect that. Every day we see a forward-looking speculative view about the future as reflected in the nifty and the rupee. And this is something to take cognizance of, but this is not something to fight. You don't try to shoot the messenger. So what to your mind was the problem and what to your mind can be a possible solution? So in my mind, there was no problem mm. that the rupee and the nifty were doing a good job of reflecting what is going on in India. Mm. What is going on in India is very poor economic policy. And it is ironic that in the attempt to do something to shoot the messenger, what the government has done is reinforce the message that the economic policy capability in India is truly weak. How did we think we were going to try to attack the problem of the rupee? Well, we have uh, proposed trade barriers. We've got restrictions against capital outflow in the form of gold. We've got restrictions against capital outflow in the form of FDI and individuals. We have attacked market development in terms of trying to shut down the currency futures market. We have messed up the operating procedure of monetary policy. All this serves to reinforce the basic point. There was gloom and mistrust in the macro and finance policy capability in India. Sure. We have ended up proving the point that yes, we actually have very poor macro and finance policy capability in India. We now have a, we will soon have a new, new governor at the Reserve Bank of India uh, Ajay, uh, you know, what do you expect him to do? I'm asking you from the context of the problems that, that you're, you're pointing, pointing out and perhaps some of them created by, as a result of bad policy. Uh, what do you think, what is the kind of task that he's faced with? The real mess that uh, Raghu faces is sustained 10% inflation. Mm. That is the problem of macro policy in India. That is what should keep him awake at night worrying that we have lost macroeconomic stability in the country. Mm. Double-digit inflation damages the macroeconomy in so many ways. Mm. At a deeper level, why do people not invest? Mm. At a deeper level, why do people uh, like to buy gold? Mm. The answer is because we have failed to create a reliable and trustworthy Indian rupee. Mm. Because from 2006 onwards, we've just lost control of inflation. That is what Raghu needs to be worrying about. Mm. And for starters, he should be reversing every single decision made in the last six months. I have one final question, Ajay, and this is with respect to uh, the signals that the government and the RBI has been sending out by virtue of all of these measures. There seems to be a sense of desperation, a sense of panic in what they're doing, and most of, most of it seems to be quick fix here and now uh, measures. Uh, a, do you agree? And B, if someone has to reverse this, where does one start? It's worse than quick fix. What 
we have done is we have gone back into our rusty socialist tools. Mm. We think that speculators are bad. We want to ban currency futures trading. We want to ban the purchase of gold. We want to ban people from taking money out. Mm. Now we want to ban certain kind of imports. Mm. This is really, really damaging. For 20 years, the story we told about India was that we reform slowly, we reform fitfully, but whatever wee bit of progress is achieved, we don't seed that ground. We don't reverse ourselves. Mm. Now suddenly we're being told that, you know, dinosaurs from the 80s are back in charge, running the place, shutting down the country.